This is an ESP8266 mini Wi-Fi board, and this one and variants of it and ones similar to it have become very popular, especially on the PS4 exploit scene for various reasons, which we'll cover later on. Today, I'm going to show you what I think, at least up to now, is the best firmware out there that you can use to flash into these ESP boards. Once you do that, you can use almost any device that has a browser in it and can connect to your ESP board via Wi-Fi to go ahead and manage that ESP board. Thanks to this firmware, you now have things such as a file manager, you have a file uploader, which allows you to upload those self-host files if you're going to use it to run an exploit. You can even update the firmware itself via the browser. It has a config editor which allows you to change and set the different credentials and all that good stuff. And oh yes, by the way, let's not forget, it does double as an exploit for the PS4 and it has a few other really nice features such as being able to be used from the user guide or the PS4's browser, either one. We're going to talk about pros, cons, do's, don'ts, and a few other things, and that's all coming up next. Hey guys, and welcome to the video. And yes, here today, we are going to focus primarily on this firmware, for the ESP8266 Wi-Fi boards and the boards that I use are identical to the one I'm showing you here and that was in the intro they're exactly like this one however this should work on any ESP8266 Wi-Fi board now this firmware is actually pretty straightforward and easy to use so I'm not going to go over every detail but I will give a brief summary on how to use all the major stuff here. I won't be covering, you know, what the exploits are for and how to use them and things like that. There's already a bunch of tutorials out there, but I will touch base a little bit on the host files and, you know, uploading them and whatnot. And then at the end, I'll show you all of this running on the PS4 uh, itself. And right now, I'm going to just give you a brief tutorial on what I, one of the tools that I use to easily flash these ESP boards via the PC. So let's go ahead and let's jump into it and get started. Oh, and by the way, if you are going to use this to run a PS4 exploit, note that this will work either through the user guide method or through the PS4 browser. If you're exploiting your PS4 for the first time, you may not have access to the browser just yet until you perma enable it. And so if you don't, this will work just fine going through the user guide, which I'll show you here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's get started first. For those of you who are new, I'll put a link in the description so you can come here and download Node MCU PY Flasher 3.0. You'll download the one that pertains to your system. This program is probably the easiest way to flash your ESP device on your PC, which we're going to cover in a little bit. It is mega easy. Down in the description, I will also leave a link to my GitHub page. I suggest you bookmark this if you're interested in my exploits and playgrounds and stuff, because everything here, when I update it, this is where it's going to get updated to first. So just when you bookmark it, you know, periodically check in if you're interested in it and check to see if there's an update. On this side uh, is the main playground. This is where all the self-host files are at in this zip file. I made a video, which I will also link in the description. I made a video before that shows you once you've enabled your PS4 web browser, how to self-host files either on your PC, on your phone, or whatever. And honestly, you should follow that video's tutorial if you plan on using this one, because this is the large one. This is the big daddy, and there is, and it's only going to get bigger. There is no way that ESP will be able to host all of this. So if you're interested, again, just follow the tutorial in that video. For today, we are going to go ahead and go here to the ESP8266 side. Go ahead and download the zip, and when you do, take this bins folder and just drag it to your desktop, and that's where we're going to go to next. 
All right, so now that you've unzipped that bins folder, let's go ahead and open it. You will find two bin files there. The firmware only one, well, contains just the firmware to flash into your ESP8266 uh, board. The complete one is the same thing. It contains this admin firmware, but it also contains my 505 KMZ exploit playground, and it already has all those files in there. So that's the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and run that node MCU PY flasher that you downloaded earlier. Okay. Uh, before that, go ahead and just plug in your ESP board uh, to your PC. If it has a flash button, you do not need to hold it down. Just go ahead and plug it in. Okay. You should have already set up the port and everything like I have here. Now on my board, on this particular ones, the baud rate needs to be set at 115-200. Uh, dual I.O. Dio should be selected, and I always recommend that you select Yes Wipes All Data so it wipes out the board and it does a nice fresh clean install. And then you're going to browse. Unfortunately, you can't drag and drop. Um, and browse to whatever bin you want to use. And let's do the complete one. All right. Now, your board, again, may be a little bit different, and some of these... Uh, options here might need to be changed. You're just going to have to look into it. Now, once you have all this set up, literally all you need to do is just flash the node MCU and then wait till it finishes. Okay, so once it's done, go ahead and unplug the USB cable from your PC. Now, once you flash this firmware, whether it's the complete version or the firmware version only, it doesn't matter. Anytime you flash this firmware onto your ESP board, I always recommend you do the following. Go ahead and unplug it, and then plug it into any USB port you want. And once you've plugged it in, wait a couple of seconds, and if your model happens to come with a reset button like this one does right here, after you've plugged it back in, press the reset button, hold it for like three or four seconds, and then let it go. This will ensure that you do a proper reset, reboot, of the board and then within about five to ten seconds after that you should see the Wi-Fi pop up now it doesn't matter where you plug this into because once it's been flashed from now on everything that we do will be done via Wi-Fi it will not transmit or transfer data via the USB cable the USB cable is only going to be used as a power source and I recommend if you're going to use this for a PS4 exploit that you don't plug it into your PS4. People have reported using various things on 505 exploits that whenever something is plugged into a USB port, sometimes it causes kernel panic. So just to make sure and to be on the safe side, you can plug it into the USB port of your router, of your TV, or anywhere else. Okay, so once you've done all of that, you can go ahead and close up everything. And now let's go ahead and connect to the ESP board. Again, I'm using my PC, but at this point, you can use anything with Wi-Fi pretty much that has a browser in it in order to connect to the ESP. Um, let's go ahead and look for it. And there it is, PS4 KMZ ESP. And you can change this later on very easily. The password is password. 110% secure. Of course, you can change that as well. Now, once it's made the connection, let's go ahead and open up the browser, and you're going to type this address here, 10.1.1.1 forward slash admin dot html, and it's all lowercase, and then let's press enter, and we should be able to connect, and there we go. So here, this page that's showing is the ESP information page. You can actually see um, some vital information about your ESP board in real time. Um, it shows you um, how much space is being used and whatnot. So yeah, uh, that's that. If you installed my complete uh, bin file, then when you go into the file manager, you're going to see all my files for uh, the exploit. Whenever you upload files, this is the location where the files are uploaded to. They will be located in your file manager. And here through the browser, you can download these files into your device that's connected to it or you can delete these files right from here. Whenever you want to upload files, self-explanatory, go into File Uploader, select the files you want, and you can batch select, 
and then just upload them. When they're done, those files will appear here in the file manager. If you chose to only uh, do the firmware only bin, when you come here to file manager, then this will be empty and then you'll have to upload your files. If you're going to use this for a PS4 exploit, then you need to make sure that the self-host files that you upload have an index.html file because that's the one that this uh, firmware looks for. Um, or if you're going to use it for anything else, and there's the index.html right there. Once the proper self-host files have been loaded up, when you come here to the main page, it will display that index HTML right here. Now, if you don't have anything in your file manager, when you come here to the main page, it'll just say PS4 payloads and the page will be blank. Here in config editor, you can of course change the login credentials and whatnot. Once you save it and you make those changes, you're probably going to instantly disconnect if you, you know, change the password and whatnot, and you'll just have to reboot the ESP again and then log back into it again. Firmware update, I'll put the um, instructions down in the description. You can download a firmware for this. You need to rename it a certain way. I think it's called fwupdate.bin and then put it somewhere. You select file, go to that bin, um, select it, and it will update it and it will flash uh, when you hit reboot on your uh, ESP. It will reflash it with that firmware. Of course, if that firmware is different from this one, then this firmware here will be gone and you'll have to do the previous steps in order to put this one back into your system. Storage format means everything in your file manager will wipe out. Since here you can only do one file at a time, if you decide you just want to start all over and you want to wipe out all of these files, go to storage format, hit that, and then everything in your uh, file manager here will disappear. And, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything else you can, you know, figure out on your own. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Okay, so here we are at the PS4. Let's go ahead and go into network. And any time that you flash new firmware or an updated firmware or whatever to these ESP boards, just to ensure that the, you know, connection um, goes smoothly and everything, I would suggest you follow this method I'm going to show you. Go ahead and go into setup. Let's go into Wi-Fi go into custom and then look for it here it is okay and then of course the password here is password unless you've changed it all right and once you've done that you're pretty much going to set everything to automatic and here do not use and automatic automatic do not use all right and then if you want you can test the connection and that's it. That's all you got to do. Let's go to the user guide. And if you installed an exploit of any kind, then there it is. It's going to show and you can start using it. If your PS4 web browser hasn't been enabled yet, you can run pretty much almost any hen. Once that hen has been run, you can come here to your library, look for your web browser, go ahead and start it. And when it starts, you can go ahead and get out of it and you should see it from now on here on your main screen and it should be permanently enabled. You can run this either from here from the browser or the play, uh, the uh, user guide, it doesn't matter. As you can see, it always reverts back to the main page, to whatever self-host files you have running and it will look for the index.html file and it just reverts to the page no matter what's up here. So as you can see, it says PlayStation.com, but it came right back to the exploit page. Now I did add the admin functionality here, but don't get confused guys. This panel, uh, pretty much the features that are here are not to the PS4, they're to the ESP board. So the file manager is the file manager of the ESP, not the PS4. Now the PS4 is not a PC, so most of the stuff here um, doesn't have functionality. You can delete files. You can clear out the storage. You can change the, uh, uh, you know, login credentials from here. Of course, when you do that, if you change them, it should instantly disconnect. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's limited in what you can do when you come to the main page. 
then you should see the exploit from there. And technically you can run your stuff right from here. Now I have kind of OCD, so what I do is um, once I'm set, I just back out to the main page of the exploit, see where the panel is not showing, and then I run the stuff. Although that's just me. And well, that's pretty much it for the PS4 side of things. And in the interest of saving time and to wrap things up, I went ahead and posted up some of the pros and some of the cons. You can go ahead and read them when you have a chance. This is for those of you who are on the fence and thinking about getting one of these little boards. There's a few strong points there as to why you should get one, but as is the case with everything in life, there's a couple of drawbacks. Two of them being, number one, the power and performance, which of course on these little chips is very limited, and that might be a turnoff to some people. And then there's the limited storage. You have up to one megabyte for the firmware and up to about three megabytes for the files. The other thing is if you plan to you know, run an exploit on your PS4, then once you've opened up your PS4 browser and you've enabled it, if you follow the method uh, that I uh, showed you in the video down below, which I'll link in the description, that shows you how to host a playground or an exploit on a PC or on a phone or something else that has much better performance and a lot uh, more storage base. But this is on a needs by needs basis, a person by person basis. Really, some people only want to just run a couple of things or a few things. And for those people, especially if you're one like me, a tinkerer, this will work just fine. So don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And on the next video, I'm going to show you how to do everything we've done here today without ever having your ESP board touch a PC. That's on the next one. We'll see you then. Take care, guys.